All right, good Tuesday evening, everybody. Live and direct, I think. So far, so good, and looking pretty good for the Mid-South area for tonight. Not quite as many thunderstorms around tonight as there were last night, but we are going to be seeing again the possibility of even more chances for showers and thunderstorms over the next couple of days. It's really not, again, going to be all that much, but it will be the possibility of seeing again some of that activity out across portions of the Mid-South area, and that, again, could spell some problems for outdoor activities. If you've never tuned in here before, welcome to the show. My name is Austin Onik. This is our live video video broadcast from downtown Memphis, or was not quite from downtown Memphis, but this is again where we uh, studio cast from for the evening hours when we're in the uh, not working downtown at various points in time. So again, thanks to everybody for joining us for tonight. If you have any questions, again, please take a look at the top of the screen. And you see up there again, wreg.com slash weather uh, for more. And you can also get, again, a little bit more in the way of chances for, again, details into what's going on across the Mid-South. And we'll keep you updated on that. We'll be live on Periscope as long as the uh, signal holds out into the rest of the evening for right now. Give me a second to get our uh, Facebook friends in here for just a moment, kind of doing things on the fly. So keeping everybody updated. And this more than likely is probably going to collapse at some point. Not the table, but the... Uh, internet broadcast. We'll see how well this holds up. Sometimes we have troubles like that with Facebook and we're sitting right on top of the emitter and I still don't know exactly why that problem is having for right now. So again, not quite the case. Have to call my son over at East Tennessee State and get his opinion on what's going on. May need an internet router of some sort there. Anyway, if you've never been here before, welcome to the show. If you have been here before, you know the setup. Again, if you have questions as to what's going on, would love to know what you're thinking about and to find out more about what's happening out there. Thanks for joining us on Periscope and Twitter at this point in time. If you, again, need the forecast and can't stick around for the whole thing conveniently right here, or if you want to get the rest of the forecast, all you have to do is just find out more by going to wreg.com slash weather. All of our Facebook friends, hopefully the audio has improved significantly and things should be able to hear a little bit better at this point in time, so good news on that. Not much to show in the way of problems on radar as opposed to what we had last night. We did have a few more thunderstorms over eastern Arkansas, and we do have, again, a few departing thunderstorms down to the south of us, looking back over to around uh, Fulton in Mississippi, Hamilton in Alabama, a few minor thunderstorms uh, just northwest of Winfield, and that's about the only thing that we really have to speak of anywhere close to the Mid-South area tonight. rest of the Mid-South is clear, but there will be more chances of showers and thunderstorms coming up as we get into the forecast for tomorrow. We'll talk more about that coming up here again in just a little while. Just checking my Periscope uh, account. Looks like everything's working on there, and thanks everybody for joining us for tonight. Big weather story of the day, again, of course, is the just absolutely sheer, incredible, rapid development of the hurricane known as Maria. It's again making its way over the Leeward Islands right now, uh, just worked its way through the area of Dominica and Guadalupe, and is going to be heading to almost a direct hit around the island of Puerto Rico, and this is going to be nasty. It's Category 5 at this time, winds of about 160, 165 miles per hour. Uh, the eye wall, as we've talked about beforehand on this show, and as you probably heard from the National Hurricane Center, is undergoing a uh, eye wall regeneration to where the eye wall collapses a little bit, the storm gets a little weaker, which happens with these storms. It's not one buzzsaw all the way on through. It comes and it goes for a little bit, but it's sitting right over some very warm ocean water, and that is doing a very good job of helping what's called the eye wall replacement cycle. And as you can see right in the middle of your screen, we do have again a incredible view right down the eye, about 30 to 40 miles wide, moving through the Virgin Islands at this time. And just south of the uh, British Virgin Islands, it's going to be going very close to around the area of Puerto Rico. And it looks like it's going to be making a direct hit as we go into the next couple of days uh, through about tomorrow or so. We'll time it out coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, information again so far, again, this is a very active tropical storm season. We are more than halfway through. That's good news, but unfortunately it's taking a time and it's taking a bit of a toll uh, as we've seen out there so far. Jose is still wandering off the east coast of the United States and it's becoming 
very lopsided. It doesn't have the form that it used to. It's a minimal uh, hurricane, winds of 75 miles per hour at this time. And that's about as good as we've gotten, again, across the area for the day. But it is doing a very good job of sending waves of energy back up to around the East Coast states, as in waves of water and a lot of wind as well. Some of those cloud tops and the rain starting to move through the tri-state area, Long Island Sound. But the core of the storm is making its way uh, just offshore and should continue to do that throughout the rest of the overnight period and continue on for the next a uh, day or so. Jose is not even close to uh, the problem that Maria has become at this point in time, and that is going to, again, be a, a threat for the Dominican Republic and that area. Let's go ahead and bring in the National Hurricane Center's maps and show you more about what's going on. Uh, out into the Atlantic, Lee, or at least what's left of Lee, uh, still remains a potential for some redevelopment off of this. 20% chance in the next couple of days, maybe, but that's way out to the Atlantic at this point, so not much of a problem there. Uh, in ascending order of problems, Jose, again, is a minimal storm, 75 miles per hour. It's a good possibility that we may uh, see this thing go to tropical storm status, which was expected over the last couple of days. So, again, that's uh, not entirely a problem for the time being at this point. Uh, the storm itself, again, nowhere near what Maria has become. Category 5 storm winds, okay, updated now for 8 o'clock p.m., winds of 175 miles per hour. That, if I'm not mistaken, puts it into the top 10 of all-time Atlantic hurricanes for strength in wind speed. Still has a ways to go on the minimal central pressure, 909 millibars. That's pretty strong, but not as strong as a lot of other category storms like that, like Rita, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the 1936 uh, Long Island storm or 1938. I can't remember which one on that one, but either way, some very uh, strong storms to worry about at this point in time. Uh, looking again, the possibility of seeing again this making its way over the area. Coming close to again, uh, Puerto Rico very much uh, within about the next 24 hours. Looks like it's going to be making landfall somewhere early tomorrow morning and then making its way into the area off of Puerto Rico between there and Hispaniola uh, by about midnight Thursday or so, and then moving away from the area at this point in time. Uh, welcome to everybody who's joining us at this time. Thanks a lot for stopping on by. Uh, Betty Shearer, Anita Sanderson-Knight, Donna Kelsey Faulkner, Mary Jewell, Kevin Dunn, thank you very much uh, for dropping on by. 79.5 degrees, Nancy Bell in East Dyersburg, thank you very much. Billy Franklin from Lexington. Uh, Kevin Dunn, nothing to be scared of. Uh, the storm is way on down to our southeast. It's not going to be a threat to the Mid-South uh, whatsoever at this time, so definitely good news uh, for us. But this will be coming up uh, fairly close. Now, the good news is that the computer models are starting to get more in line, and they are curving this thing up following the path of Jose. So this does not look like it's going to be a repeat of Irma. Thankfully, again, that was a big enough problem as it was. But if you are in town from Irma, sheltering from the storm, I would watch this storm because if that changes and shifts a little bit farther over, uh, this is not going to be fun for Miami. Orlando or any place like that if the storm decides to head a little bit farther that direction. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3. We'll keep you updated on that. Nothing else is brewing according to what we have from the National Hurricane Center, even coming in from off of Africa. So not that much at this point, but three, that's bad enough, and that's a very busy season to talk about so far, so keep it tuned for that. Here in the Mid-South, things are comparatively quieter. We have, again, a very low probability for widespread severe weather, so there's little, if anything, going on. Next few days, we'll see what's left of Jose, either as a hurricane or a tropical storm going up the East Coast. We've still got high pressure well in control, and that does a very good job of keeping things very stable. High pressure, just like its name implies, pushing down toward the surface and causing things to be relatively stable. We will see the chance, as you can see with the green occasionally making its way over the mid-south, of an occasional shower or thunderstorm. This high pressure is doing a pretty good job of keeping any other storm systems well back to our northwest of making their way on through. Some good news for the fire-ravaged areas up around Montana and the upper northwest United States. We've got a lot in the way of rain possibly some stormy weather out there, but more importantly, snow and rainfall, that's going to really help the fire situation out that direction. So uh, very good news on that at this point in time. So uh, hopefully not as bad as things have been, but fire season still goes on 
at this point in time. Uh, Billy Franklin, what makes Maria turns more than Irma? Right now, it's the steering winds uh, of the atmosphere that decide to move the storms uh, one direction for the other. Again, what we look at for the current conditions of these storms uh, to change is going to be, again, these storms developing and moving through the atmosphere. The atmosphere does a very good job of turning these winds, but also of creating these storms. And let me see if I can get Maria up here real quick. That's Jose. Jose looped the loop once. It's a good possibility we're going to see Jose loop the loop again. This is from tropicalatlantic.com. If anybody would like to borrow this website, it's a really cool one to have around. And as of right now, the information that we have is showing that uh, the computer models at this time, uh, this again is showing everything kind of lining up pretty nice to where a couple of models a little farther east a little farther west but at least as of right now they're all kind of lining up together which means that it looks like the threat is going to be between the east coast and bermuda that's where we see again the steering winds of the atmosphere helping to push or move this thing along and that is going to be something to think about in the next few days as well as we watch again for the potential of let me see if i can get it up here real quick uh for the next graphic uh this is from earth earth.nullschool.net. We featured this before, and we've shown this to you on many occasions. Uh, this is, again, a good three-dimensional model of the winds on planet Earth. We're going to go up to about maybe five miles up in the atmosphere, so you can see a little bit more about what's going on. Uh, that area right to the area close to around the West Coast states, that's that storm system we were just talking about, digging southward into the atmosphere. A lot of cold air starting to sink on down, and that, again, is going to help. Once that passes over us to the east, that may actually help to, to move uh, what's left of Jose out into the Atlantic, kind of like a slap shot from a hockey puck almost, just to move it out that direction. But once high pressure reestablishes itself, it's a good possibility that we could see Jose loop the loop again and head back toward the United States as a tropical storm, maybe as a tropical depression at this point in time. Uh, that's going to be, again, the main thing we're going to be looking at there. Now, the steering currents for uh, Maria are about the same that they were with Irma. It's just that as of right now, the same winds that are moving Jose back to the north are going to do a good job of taking Maria and curving it, hopefully, away from the Virgin Islands, the Grand Bahamas, and from around Haiti and Hispaniola and the Dominican Republic in places like that. So steering winds in the atmosphere, that's what helps to move these things around. It's also what helps to create your weather here in the Mid-South. So that's a good reason why you see these things turn one direction or the other. That's not fake science, again, in any way or stretch of the imagination. That is the most incredible science and math on the planet, helping to determine how your forecast is going to be determined and what's going to change out there. It's really cool to think about it when you have the opportunity to sit down and see a little bit more about that. Okay, forecast for tonight. Not much changing, lower to mid-70s, a stray chance of a shower or a thunderstorm out there. Fog could be a problem in the morning. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3. Todd Demers will have a forecast update for you there. Uh, again, into tomorrow, very steamy, back into the lower 90s. Chances of showers and thunderstorms best down around Tupelo. Uh, about 20% coverage chance expected there. Tomorrow night, low temperatures dropping on down into the lower to mid-70s, and that's about as good as it gets there. And then high temperatures on Thursday, and we'll go ahead and skip ahead to Friday and show you almost identical conditions as we go into the first day of autumn. Autumn officially begins Friday afternoon at 3.02, so we are going to be seeing the uh, change in season come up if as not to say that we're going to be seeing anything in the way of change in temperatures. It's still going to be in the 90s for the first weekend of autumn coming up on Saturday, but the time and changes are coming, so we'll be seeing some cooler temperatures out there someplace, just maybe not immediately at this point in time, so something to think about there. Again, for right now, that's what we're looking for, very warm conditions out there. If you'd like to see more about uh, the forecast directly from News Channel 3, well, okay, let's see, a little bit, there we go. Thank you very much. Okay. The News Channel 3 forecast from the Storm Prediction Center available again at uh, wreg.com slash weather. You can find out a lot more information about uh, what's going on there. Let's see if we're going, uh, let's see if we're having some trouble with Periscope. I apologize for that. I thought we were uh, doing 
pretty good on there. Are we getting any closer? Hang on just one second. Bear with me. Want to make certain. Okay, good. Just want to make certain we were on the air, so to speak, or on the net anyway. A couple of days worth of showers and thunderstorms. Again, isolated activity for the most part. That's about as good as what we're going to be seeing right now. And chances of showers and thunderstorms remain into the next few days. The only cooler weather, so to speak, and believe me, I hate making these quotation mark thingies more than anybody else. Uh, this one right here, again, showing some mid to upper 80s for highs. That's about as cool as it gets anytime soon. So yes, there is cooler weather out there. No, it's just not going to be happening uh, anytime soon, unfortunately, for this period of time. Catch my forecast uh, tomorrow morning on News Channel 3. Is, uh, forecast on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio uh, with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live. And we'll bring you more information about that. Uh, tons of information also available if you'd like to check it out. Uh, on my Facebook page, asking a few questions on there from the Ole Miss fans to see if they like the new idea of the Land Shark logo or mascot for the University of Mississippi. That's pretty interesting to take a look at. We also have uh, some new information as well uh, about what's going on into the area tonight uh, from the earthquake aftermath in Mexico City. Powerful earthquake there. A lot of new information coming up. Happy International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Hope you had a chance to say R to somebody out there at some point in time. Great web comic to go to. Not about pirates specifically, but a great tale. Uh, but it's called Red's Planet from a cartoonist that does a great job, Eddie Pittman. Great opportunity to see more about that. The Mexico City earthquake was actually not felt but detected here in the Mid-South area. If you'd like to see that, that's further down on my page on Facebook. Uh, dinner tonight was quite delicious. Vegetables, beef, stew, or pot roast, and a lot of other vegetables in there as well. Uh, the price of peaches and fruit are going to be going up, and the selection is going to be going down in the next several years. Good possibility, because unfortunately we're seeing some big changes out there. So if you'd like to know more about what's going on, a great article from 538.com for more on that, and a whole bunch of other stuff, including updates on the tropics. Oh, and also uh, Code Crew of Memphis. They had a party fundraiser coming up called Revenge of the Nerds this Friday. It's been postponed due to factors beyond their control. Uh, code Crew teaches kids a lot about uh, how to code for computer systems, how to write their own programs. It's really cool to get involved with, and they're also available on Facebook and also on other places as well. So if you'd like to know more about the fundraiser or how you can get your kids involved and learn more about coding, this is the place to go to. So if you'd like to find out more, great opportunity to see more there. And of course, available on my Twitter page at twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3, keeping track of the tropics and lots of information coming in about what's going on there. So please keep it tuned to News Channel 3, again, for more information on that. Also, some great details about nature and science Science. Uh, Amateur Radio, the American Radio Relay League, is doing a lot of great efforts with uh, pulling together information for the hurricane on various radio frequencies. So we'll be glad to learn a little bit more about what's going on there. And that's all available on Facebook, Twitter, and all my other social media platforms as well. We do have, again, a lot to talk about in the near future as Maria makes landfall in and around Puerto Rico uh, in the course of the next couple of days. Uh, possibly, again, a threat to the United States. We cannot take this lightly. So if you're heading to Florida, or anywhere close to the East Coast, please keep that in mind and keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for the latest. Questions, concerns, comments, ideas, anything on here that uh, you would like to see more of or less or just about the right thing, if it's too hot, too cold, just right, whatever, let me know about it. Blue bar up there, austin.onic at wreg.com. Email me and let me know. If there's something on here that will keep you turning back in, we'd love to know about it, but this is, again, a good opportunity for you to be able to let me know about what you'd like to see on here. We'd love to feature more stuff that people would love to tune in and take a look at, so please uh, drop me a line and let me know if there's something on here. Plus, pictures. If you got them, tweet them, and we'd love to show them on News Channel 3 social media, but we can't show them if you don't send them. So please go ahead and send them in. Looks like I'm getting a weak signal here. We may drop out at any moment, so I'm going to go ahead and close things down for the night. So thanks to everybody for joining us for tonight's Weather Overtime. And again, contact me on social media or on email. We'd love to hear more from you. Live and direct from House Onik in Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Thanks for joining us, and stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online.